talk about pedestrian travels. Well, that felt like a relatively pedestrian score. But again, I do want to credit, there was a moment where Yanel Aku left his mark quite well in terms of just coming through to really make the pressure on the thrower. But there are a good couple of seconds where he wasn't applying a force whatsoever, yet there was no opportunity for the downfield options. Everyone is really covering their matchups so fantastically and certainly if they can keep putting that kind of pressure on consistently they may get a couple more breaks because there has been the one for the French it could have been a bigger deficit if not for that and at 8-4 it is halftime we're going to take a look at our Tokai halftime show we'll start with a little message from our sponsors And we are back. The Tokai Halftime Show coming with some banging music here. We got the dancers on the field and we're gonna check out the highlights, a summary of, from the start of this game and take you back through some of the scoring moments. There's the PV throw and the Pavia pickup. Sarako. And here's a look and one of the first scores of the game as Bavia goes back to center. Oh no, he doesn't. Spins that one back around. Olivieri setting that one up. I'm really enjoying the throwing execution of the Italians. They are throwing out into the space, allowing their players to really grind towards it. It's asking for a couple of layouts here and there, but they really are keeping it away from these very well taught French defenders. Compare and contrast though, the French are throwing into some slightly looser area spaces, relying on some big receptions. See that overshot there that was redeemed by the Italians. Arcangeli, of course, putting that one very close, but that was a nice read by an off-disc defender. The pressure only gets through the end zone. Of course, I complimented the Italian throws. It has been more about the resets that they are throwing into the space rather than some of those spicier shots upfield. But the French were winning the sky battles in the early stages, Steph, but they seem to have found themselves a little bit on the back foot as the half dragged on maybe succumbing to the hot sun here in padua yeah they've been uh playing into the hands of the defense the zone defense has prevented the ability to really stretch the field for the french and as such they have shortened up their game and not taking full advantage of where they bend the one of the parts of the game they benefit the most and that being the aerial battles as you see the highlights in the second part of this first half you're gonna see a lot more Italian highlights as they did a lot of the scoring from 4-3 it got extended to 8-4 that Italian 5-1 run putting big pressure on the French there's the Zani layout off of the Laffy lefty And Laffy throwing just like the older brother, spitting image, really, isn't he? <laughs> well, I'm sure he'll have uh, ways to differentiate from his elder brother, of course. To be fair, a player you probably do want to emulate. He is pretty good. And, of course, running the clipboard for this Italian side. One of, is it three or four Italian coaches? I think there's four officially. I thought it was three, but Marco Barattini included in that coaching group with Pavan with Festa and of course with the elder Mr. Laffy, Arturo Laffy. They've got a good combination geographically speaking from Bologna, from uh, Rimini and of course from uh, right here in Padova comes Pavan. And of course they've got some old, some young, they, they really do have a good, they've done a good job of diversifying their coaching unit to kind of 
be able to touch on all bases for this team. Well, and to talk about the rest of the Laffey family, Alberto Laffey does say a big shout out to his dad, Gianluca, his mom, Elena, sisters, Marguerite and Eleonora, and his brothers, Ricardo, and of course, Arturo. And that's everything from the Tokai Halftime Show, wrapping up the first half, giving you a nice summary. It's been an interesting first half. It was tight, tight, tight to start, and the Italians are just flexing away towards the well, towards the midway mark there. Let's see if the French can bring a little bit more in the second half, Hannah. Oh, I hope so, Steph. Because we haven't had a universe point finish yet for the finals. We haven't, and we want it, but it's a big ask for the French. We're going to take one short break here and be back with all that second half action for you. Look at the match stats. The Italians with the lead and they've done it clinically. Only four break chances, Hannah. And batting 100% on that. Four break chances and four breaks converted. Well, I'm a bit confused because that doesn't quite match the graphic I've got on my comm source. But either way, it has been a very tight one. Certainly the conversion rate for the French has been all you can really ask for. They've just had, in fact, no, yeah, it's only the one turnover for the Italian offensive unit, and that was pounced upon. In fact, we have had zero points so far this game, Steph, that have had multiple turnovers. It has been you falter, 